Apple M1X. Everything we know so far about Apple's next big chip. Launched in late 2020, Apple's M1 chips revolutionized its Macs with a seismic leap in performance and battery life. Now the company is preparing a high-end version of this chip to take things to the next level. Dubbed the M1X, this chip could help cement Apple's computers as the laptops and desktops to beat. But what can you expect in the M1X? How will it compare to the M1? And what kind of specs will it enable in the Macs that host it? We got all that info and more in this in-depth guide. At the show, the M1X is expected to be revealed inside the new MacBook Pro 14 and the updated MacBook Pro 16. According to Bloomberg reporter Mark Gurman, the M1X will also find its way into a new, high-end Mac Mini, although that might not make an appearance until sometime after Apple's October exhibition. As for the price, that's dictated by the devices the M1X finds itself inside. The MacBook Pro 14 is set to replace the existing MacBook Pro 13, and that starts at $1,299. The MacBook Pro 16, meanwhile, starts at $2,399. However, we have heard talk of price increases for these devices, so don't be surprised if you have to pay a little extra for an M1X laptop. And the Mac Mini? The M1X version is said to be a step above the current M1 model, which starts at $1,699. There's no word on pricing yet, but it will probably be higher than the $1,899 price of the current top-end M1 edition. Backs and performance. Let's get straight to it. If the rumors are true, the M1X is going to perform conspicuously better than the M1. That's thanks to its higher core count, as detailed by Mark Gurman. He posits that there are two variants of the M1X in the works, codenamed Jade C Chop and Jade C Die, respectively. The former will offer up eight high performance cores, two high efficiency cores, and 16 graphics cores. The latter will come in the same configuration, but ramp up the number of graphics cores to 32. Compare that to the M1, which has four high performance cores, four high efficiency cores, and eight graphics cores. It's such a leap, in fact, we estimated the M1X could reach NVIDIA RTX 3070 mobile levels of graphical performance. Jade C Chop and Jade C Die could represent the chips going into the MacBook Pro 14 and MacBook Pro 16, respectively. Or they could be two variants that are offered in both MacBook Pro models, a high-end and a low-end chip for each MacBook. We love the Mac, and our teams have been working tirelessly to deliver the best lineup of notebooks and desktops that we've ever had. Well, now it's time for the Mac to take a gigantic leap forward. To do this, we needed to develop a new set of advanced technologies. So for the past several years, we've had our teams working with the singular purpose of defining and building the next generation of Mac. And at the core of this effort is the silicon. We've been making Apple silicon for more than a decade. It's at the heart of iPhone iPad, and Apple Watch, and now we want to bring it to the Mac. So the Mac can take a huge leap forward with the incredible performance, custom technologies, and industry-leading power efficiency of Apple Silicon. And as we've said, we're developing a family of chips, and we're going to transition the Mac line to these new chips over the next couple of years. Well, today, we are incredibly excited to announce our first step in this transition with our first chip designed specifically for the Mac. And we call it M1. M1 has been optimized for our most popular low power systems where small size and power efficiency are critically important. It is a stunningly capable chip and it ushers in a whole new era for the Mac. Now let's get started by spending a few minutes on a deep dive into this new chip with Johnny. M1 is a breakthrough chip for the Mac. Our approach with M1 was to deliver industry-leading performance and features while relentlessly focusing on power efficiency. As a result, M1 delivers a giant leap in performance per watt, and every Mac with M1 will be transformed into a completely different class of product. M1 is the first system on chip, or SOC, for the Mac. Let me show you what that means. Until now, a Mac needed multiple chips to deliver all of its features. It had chips for the processor, I.O., security, and memory. 
Now with M1, these technologies are combined into a single SOC, delivering a whole new level of integration for more simplicity, efficiency, and amazing performance. M1 also features our Unified Memory Architecture, or UMA. M1 unifies its high bandwidth, low latency memory into a single pool within a custom package. As a result, all of the technologies in the SOC can access the same data without copying it between multiple pools of memory. This dramatically improves performance and power efficiency. M1 is the first personal computer chip built using the industry-leading 5 nanometer process technology. With incredibly small transistors measured at an atomic scale, M1 is remarkably complex. It packs the largest number of transistors we've ever put into a single chip. M1 has a massive 16 billion transistors, and we use all of these transistors to give M1 amazing performance and leading edge technologies. And our goal is to make each of these technologies best in class. The incredible performance of M1 starts with the CPU, which features two types of cores, high performance and high efficiency. Each performance core is designed to run a single task or thread as efficiently as possible while maximizing performance. We've been advancing it year after year. And now with the huge improvements in M1, when it comes to low power silicon, our high performance core is the world's fastest CPU core. And M1 has four of these incredibly fast high performance cores. So multi-threaded workloads take a huge leap in performance as well. To handle lighter workloads more efficiently, M1 brings high efficiency cores to the Mac. They use a tenth of the power while still delivering outstanding performance. These e-cores are the most efficient place to run lightweight tasks and allow the performance cores to be used for the most demanding workloads. And M1 has four of these efficiency cores, which on their own deliver similar performance as the current generation dual-core MacBook Air at much lower power. How long will a battery last? A key consideration for any laptop is battery life, and Apple's M1 MacBooks perform brilliantly here. In our reviews, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 hit well over 16 hours of light web browsing and 21 hours of video playback. The M1 MacBook Air, meanwhile, managed 15.5 hours and 18.5 hours in the same tests. That was absolutely miles ahead of Apple's previous Intel-based MacBooks. With numbers like those, Apple is in no hurry to improve battery longevity. Instead, it seems the company is focusing its efforts on performance. We can infer that based on the core counts we discussed earlier. If Kerman is right and the M1X gets an 8-2 split between high performance and high efficiency cores, that's a very different ratio to the M1's 4-4 split, and one that's stacked much more in favor of the high performance cores. So, it seems Apple is quite happy with its current battery performance, and we can't blame it. We therefore forecast the M1X to roughly maintain the M1's phenomenal battery life, while also offering better CPU and graphics performance. Nice. As well as that, the low-end MacBook Pro 13 is a curious claim, since the totally redesigned MacBook Pro 14 is almost upon us. We suppose it's possible that Apple will have two MacBook Pro sizes running concurrently, after all, the iPhone X launched at the same time as the iPhone 8 with its old chassis and home button design. But it doesn't feel very like Apple to do such a thing. The company usually goes all in when it launches a new product format, and the iPhone X is the exception that proves the rule. Still, we can't rule it out entirely. Ultimately, we will probably get our answer at Apple's October event later this month. Thank you for watching that video. Please subscribe our channel to stay informed about the technology world. New tech is the place to be. Bye.